<laughs> Guys, what's going on? Jeremy LaFrance, Backstage Entertainment. We're in Om Omaha, Nebraska tonight at the Funny Bone. Your first time here. It is my first time in Omaha, yes. in Nebraska, period. Exactly. So, so John, yes. John Caparulo, comedian. Uh, you know, like I said, Omaha, It's we just stepped outside. It, it was freezing, like the cars now have snow on them and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you said earlier in your bit, you, you, it's, it was nice earlier in the day, nicer out. It was, out, it was. And now it's... <laughs> freaking cold <laughs> it's awful eh? yeah i just like um you know people always think because uh you know i'm from ohio that you know like uh you know well you should be used to this and right. it's like no nobody gets used to this like it's just it's off every year it we all are like fuck me dude like <laughs> what I, you know it's like it's just like it just doesn't it never you never get used to it you never like it you just, you know, it's almost like you, you hold out hope, I think, every yeah. year. Like, uh, you know, I think people who live, you know, in, in the snow belt of America are, uh, you know, we're rooting for global warming. <laughs> like, where you're just like, please, it, it, you know, because every now and then you'll get that one, like, mild winter. Yeah. You know, we're like, like, February, it's like 70 or something like that. And you're like, oh, sweet, you know, and you just kind of hold out hope that, you know, one winner, you know, you know, just just like God gives you that one off or something. <laughs> but it's uh, it, it's just, you know, I I I've always I've always hated it. I you know, people still think, you know, I don't own a coat, and you know, I still go to all these cold cities, and people think it's because I live in L.A. and it's not. It's right. just, <laughs> just like, <laughs> I just I don't plan on staying outside very long like i'm just like i run from the house to the car and the car to wherever i'm going and then back where it's like i just yeah i i, I don't i the, the, i don't bundle up mm -hmm. uh, you know i'm not well, going sledding and it's kind of like a sport because every time from the house to the car you try and beat your time don't you yeah you do yeah <laughs> like or you know you try to you know like before they got because now they have those, uh, you know, after I moved away, those uh, the, the remote start yeah. for the car. Um, but, uh, yeah, that used to be my thing was just like, you know, just tough it out, like run to the car, get it started, blasting the heat, yeah. and then run back in. And then it's just like, you know, you get in there and it's like, oh, it's toasty. Very toasty. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. Now let's talk about tonight. I mean, you performed tonight on Valentine's Day. You had mentioned that you had just got married in May, so it's actually your first Valentine's Day as a married couple, mm -hmm. and you're away from your wife. Is she? Yeah. How's she taking it? Um, you know she, uh, she takes everything, <laughs> you know, very, you know, very well. I, I mean, actually, like she takes, you know, she just doesn't. Uh, he, he, she hasn't really she's not the, she's not one to complain about it like right. it's just like it's just, it is what it is plus it's you know it's valentine's day you know uh, it's you know it's like she doesn't really care that much you know and it's like we uh, are are we we met each other actually in february so we have like sort of a anniversary in mm -hmm. february so yeah. i'll be home for that so we're gonna you know celebrate for that. but it's still like you know i mean you know like i said on stage like i was you know i thought about it, it was just like i thought about it when i was on the radio today i'm just like you know i mean i i at this point after you do the engagement rings and you know uh you know you, you pay off her car and she has my credit card like do i really need to buy you a stuffed bear or is it just you know she knows i love her so we're good you know and uh so it's but but not being there there's still part of me that's like you know no, i want to ask that. you because my opinion on cards in general is kind of pointless because you read them you throw them away mm -hmm. do, you, do you guys even do cards anymore um she will do you know <laughs> uh she she'll do she'll do cards she's yeah. you know she's still a relatively civilized human being right you know i mean when you're a comedian you become essentially feral <laughs> you know like <laughs> Just it's just like the rules of, of society don't apply to you anymore. Like nobody expects anything from you anymore. Like it's just like ah, eh, he's a comedian and you know he's a fuck up. So like, 
nobody really minds, you know, like, it's just weird, like, like, now that I have a wife, yeah, like, I was talking about on stage, like, people get thank you notes from me, I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I sent that before, you know, it's just, uh, but we, you know, it's, I have her there just, you know, to kind of, uh, do that for me to make me look civilized. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's another one. The thank you notes. It's just excessive. My wife's the same way. A relative will give us something at a get together. Let's send them a thank you note. Oh, you know? I it's the I'm, worst. I'm like that way. Where it's just <laughs> like I. I mean, <clears throat> she'll. Uh, I will. Will be a few. Um, yeah, he, like with the thank you notes. It's just like you know. Yeah, she's like, did you send them a thank you note? Like my mom would always be that. Like uh, when I was a kid, did you send your aunt and uncle a thank you note? I'm like. What? Oh, I'm like, first of all, I don't own any stamps, so why would you think I did that? And, like, second of all, it's like, I thanked them, remember? Like, when they gave it to me, I said, thank you, why do I have to send a note now, uh, uh, you know, doubling up the thank you? So it's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, but it's, it's, a, it's a formality that, you know, I guess you just kind of abandon, especially yeah, when you're a single dude for long enough. I don't know who invented the thank you note, but uh, <clears throat> I'm not giving them any kudos, so... No, <laughs> no. I'm not giving them a thank you note. Yeah. No, no, they're not getting a note. They're not getting a note. They might give it a fuck you note, but, uh, you know, that's... Uh, <laughs> that could be your new line, maybe, the fuck you note. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, I send, I send fuck idea. you notes a lot. You know? <laughs> I always remember to send those. Many of your fans know you from Meat Cap, one of your stand-up specials. Yes. We talked about on Netflix and everything. I guess being on Netflix, I guess, how does it work for you as far as, do they you get a little cut from every time people watch that? Or <coughs> I guess, what's the deal and how you got that on Netflix? Um, You know, it went on, uh, it went on Netflix and then, because they do a thing like where it's like, it's on their instant view, but it only, yeah. like, it only, like, it's like six months and then they take it off. And I remember, like, uh, a lot of my fans, like, like they started, like, complaining, like, that it was, like, it had been taken off Incident View on Netflix, and then they couldn't watch it anymore. And it was, like, I, I you know, honestly, you know, as a comedian, <laughs> that's why I hire managers and agents. Yeah, right. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know where any of that, you know, that money went, and where, you know, like, it's, like, if it's, you know... <laughs> how it works if you know people download it on netflix how 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 it works if you know like we just recently you know in the past couple of years found out you know with uh like satellite radio yeah <clears throat> they would play my stuff all the time mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was like okay you know i mean i that's cool and then i found out that like it's like yeah they owe you money for that right and you have to hire like you have to hire one company that monitors how much they play it, and then you have to hire another company to monitor their, the monitoring company. All I know is every few months they send me a check, That's all you care and about. I'm just like, eh, it's, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Like, it's just one of those things, like, as a comedian, you know, there are some comedians with very good business sense, um, mm. you know, and I'm not one of them. <laughs> I know I know nothing about you know yeah the the numbers and you know what I'm owed and everything like even when I do a you know a show like here you know they always try to give me a number sheet and I'm mm -hmm. like dude I you would you just you, you if there's a problem my agent will call you but yeah. I wouldn't know the difference right. so sign yeah the, sign the check huh mm -hmm. <laughs> you've appeared on TV quite a bit uh, maybe your favorite TV show you've been on or just anything you've appeared on um well <clears throat> you know my favorite um my favorite long term obviously chelsea lately has been yeah you know that's that's my favorite because of um for a lot of reasons just because i mean it's really that's been the one thing that's like really helped my you know people know who i who i am and i love you know as a comedian you know being able to you know because you know some some comics can't go on there and do well like it's just like because you really have to just be you know in the moment and just funny you know with whatever's coming at you and that's uh, you know and i i love that test i love being able to pass that test and that's uh so it's like 
that plus it's just you know like it's just it's been such you know it's been a a, a really cool experience just to you know be a part of it and it's, it's it's become such a big thing you know doing the tonight show the first time is a huge honor mm-hmm. you know it's uh, uh doing that is uh is really cool so yeah i mean i'm trying to think what else i've i've been on that was <clears throat> that I actually liked, because a lot of times I'll be on something and I'm like, eh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, you know, I'm like, ah, well, it's, it's, you know, like uh, I don't want to see it. But uh, I, uh, <laughs> you know, well, uh, recently last last week I um, I taped a um, uh, a salute to the troops special with Ron White, mm-hmm. and it was me, uh, uh, Josh Blue, Brian Regan, Kathleen Madigan, and Ryan R- Ralphie May. Oh, yeah. And um, you know, and then Ron White uh, hosting, and you know, I didn't know Ron knew who I was, and just to find out, you know, it was like you know he was a fan, and that you know he asked me to do a show with him, and to be in that, that's a pretty good lineup. Yeah. So I was like, that was a cool thing to do. That that's uh, you know coming up that airs I think next month or something. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you just got a lot of stuff just. So, yeah, coming yeah, up. yeah. It's 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 you know. Okay. I do okay. <laughs> the Madcap Hour you've done before with your wife on Sirius XM. Mm-hmm. What uh, what was it like working with your wife? Mm-hmm. You you get a mix of people that you know they work with their spouse or whatever, and you get, yeah yeah it's great or uh, <laughs> it, it is um, it's you know it's it's cool because like you know I mean I asked her you know to do you know to do it with me and to basically you know feel free to you know you know uh, make fun of me mm-hmm. do what she does around the house whatever it's fine um it's uh it can be nerve-wracking i guess where it's like you know like if we get we get in an argument in the car on the way to the show i'm like oh god damn it like i, I like because i'm really bad at I mean, as a comic, we bend the truth and stuff like that. But I'm really, I'm really bad at at at, at dishonesty and lying. Yeah. So it's like I'm bad at hiding it. If like you know, if we're like you know, in a thing, so it's like I I end up like I'd rather just talk about it than you know than than hide it. But yeah. uh, that was the only thing. It was just like sometimes just. The pressure build up because I, you know, I get anxious before I go do a show of any kind, and then it's like, oh, great, now, now you're pissed at me, and and we got to go on the air in fifteen minutes. Great, this is fucking fantastic. <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, but it's, you know, yeah, it, it, but it was, it's, it's cool. We we just ended up, uh, you know, the show was. It was on Sirius Radio for a little bit with uh, on Blue Collar, and you know, I, you know, for me it was like it, it just kind of felt like you know they wouldn't let us like put it online or anything like yeah. that, and so it was like whoever was in the car at the time listening to the radio right. ha- happened to catch it, and so we ended up moving over to uh, uh, the Toad Hop Network to have like it was like. I, they didn't call it podcast, but it was basically a podcast, yeah. and um, you know, it just it didn't, you know, for me, it's like it's one of those things that, like, you know, every comic now, it's kind of like it started years ago, like with, um, you know, websites, MySpace pages. You know, when I first started, it was people were like, "Where's your business card?" I'm like, "I." <laughs> <laughs> uh, on a napkin I don't know like it's just like it's weird like uh, and it's like everybody now has to have a podcast and I'm like to me it's like you know I, I'd rather just you know you know go on stage in front of an audience yeah. and talk about this stuff right. instead of you know sit in a radio studio or whatever and yeah. just just uh, record that you kind of know how many people are out at the crowd then. And yeah. Rather than yeah, you know, it's just... Catching I'm, bits in the <clears> car. <throat> yeah, know? it's just kind of like, yeah, it's almost like, you know, if I'm on my podcast, I don't want to, you know, I come up with something good, it's like, oh, no, I, you know, I don't want to waste that. Right, <laughs> right. 
you uh, were on Todd and Tyler radio station this morning. I uh, uh-huh. talked to those guys. They're a lot of fun. I listen to their show all the time. Yes. You talked about uh, haters and how you get, uh, you know, you, you've done the orange popsicle joke in your <laughs> in your bit of a meat cap uh-huh. and you don't do that anymore because of you know you, you would get people that come up to you at the end of the show well, i like orange popsicles or right, something like that right what uh what has probably been the worst like hater experience because i mean anybody uh-huh. we've interviewed of course say they've had haters and i mean we have haters right i've been called the worst interviewer in the world uh, it's, it's amazing <laughs> so. how brave people are when behind a screen yeah. name aren't they yeah. um um, you else, know, huh? that's that's one thing that, um, you know, I never really experienced before. Like, you know, I wasn't, obviously I wasn't like popular in high school or anything <laughs> like that. So I was never, <clears throat> I never had to deal with people, you know, you, you know, not telling me they didn't like me or whatever. Like, and, uh, you know, doing stand up, it was like, I always seemed to, you know, People seemed to, you know, like what I was doing. So it was like, I, I wouldn't do it if I felt like, you know, people didn't like it. And, um, but, you know, my, by far, obviously, you know, the, the uh, you know, I, 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 for me, it's like, you know, a lot of times it's, a, you know, like I, I ended up getting into it uh, the other day. Um, this is, that's why I don't, I was telling them today on the radio, like, I, really stay away from social media like as far as like the the people who say things to me my wife filters them and then she'll tell me because she knows i'll get riled up and like the mm-hmm. other day she accidentally because she ended up like was arguing with some houston reporter who like i mean it, like of all things she she decided to criticize my wedding vows I'm like, what do you even know? Really? Like, you know, and it's just like, uh, you know, it was like, because I made a joke. My my wedding vows were, they were honest and they were hard, but it was like, I can't be in front of a, a you know, a room full of people and not mm-hmm. you know, tell jokes. Right. So, you know, like one of the part of my wedding vows was like, you know, I, uh, um, you know, I, 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 I said, you know, you will always come first. You will always be, you know, the most important thing to me. And if not, I'll always buy you some shoes. And like, <laughs> it was a joke. Like, yeah. it, it was, and and this idiot reporter in, in Houston like took it literally. Like, said, "Well, shoes are no replacement for a man who's attentive and and uh, loving and care. I'm like." Dumbass! It's a fucking. Why? Why are you like taking this literally? You're just ruining comedy. But it's like, um, I, I, I just, I got into it uh, really bad. It, it all started because I, when Meat Cap came out on Comedy Central, mm-hmm. um, a guy from uh, Mesa, Arizona, um, like I was getting all because it was when MySpace was still yeah. relevant. <laughs> like it was still, What's it was that? still like a, a party people were going <laughs> yeah. to, and uh, it was like I was getting all these messages from people, and <clears throat> you know, it was like that was the first time I was like getting a lot of you know just people, hey, you're really funny, and they're yeah. throwing you know, great, 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 just constant you know messages and. I see one with the heading of unfortunate, and I'm like, oh, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and it's like four o'clock in the morning. I'm sitting there by myself, and I open it up, and it's a guy, basically comic book guy from The Simpsons, telling me, you know, that I should quit comedy and yeah. that I'm really no good, and um, you know, he's not trying to be mean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and. <clears throat> And I'm, you know, I'm a comedian. I'm very sensitive, and I'm a nut. Like I, you know, it's like I let things bother me. So I ended up trying to. I, I went. I, you I, I, I back. I messaged him back. Like we ended up going. Like I was like trying to reason with this person. Like what? Why can't you just, you know, just, you know, if you don't like something, just turn it off. Like yeah. it's like, well, it's, right. uh, you know, what's the? Why is it? Why did you feel the need you had to? To bring me down, you know, like, and um, it ended up going back and forth to the point where he blocked me from contacting him, and I was like, "You're not getting the last word here." 
And so I end up like giving his uh, his MySpace page to my like I had like twenty thousand friends on there or something, and they all start lighting him up like oh. <clears throat> on his page. So he like shut yeah. down his page and and you know I thought it was kind of like you know like you know he was done with and I like it was like a few days later I remember I was in Detroit and I get I start getting messages from people saying um hey who's this lady and I'm like what are you talking about and like and I look and it's like there was a MySpace page and then there was like and then there was a blogspot page that was there was it was supposed to be this woman saying that um I lived with her, her husband, and, and their daughter when I lived in Ohio. <laughs> like, I mean, okay. like I didn't have a family. I was some fucking wayward kid. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, it's like, uh, it's, uh, I mean, but uh, uh, that I lived with them when I was in Ohio and that I molested their daughter and that I was a member of a white supremacist organization. <laughs> as if pedophile's not enough. Yeah. Let's add race. Like, in case anybody looks at it and goes, eh, pedophile's not that bad. Oh, wait, he's racist, too? Yeah. Like, what the... F Dude, Quite seriously? And I remember just... I was like, you can't do that. Like, there's no way somebody can put that out there. Just blatant, absolute fabrication and lies about somebody that are that horrendous and get away with it it's like okay let's just call the cops they can just find the ip address and they'll, they'll go get them and i i i i found out like i first i had my lawyer send a cease and desist letter to google who owned blogspot they're like you know they're like, we, we, we yeah we this law would you know we don't have to do anything about it because it's uh you know it's you, you, this law protects us from actually having to police our own site so you're gonna have to take it up with the author mm. the author's a fucking crazy person in his mom's basement what the fuck am i gonna do with that guy so and at the time it's like i didn't i really wasn't you know you know making much money i was uh, it, and I couldn't afford a, a litigator, like to go out and like you know try to get a settlement or so, like to go after the guy. So basically, I was advised to ignore it. Like I literally was like, I can't believe this. I like I actually, you know, I had to call my mom and say, hey, you know, just in case, I don't want somebody to blindside you with this. Some dude put up a page and it's uh. awful. And I mean, it stayed around for a couple of years and. You know, it was just still there, and it really, you know, bothered me a lot that it, you know, I couldn't, and it never came up until like I was supposed to do a college in uh, um, New Mexico, and they pulled out of the booking because of this page. Oh, and I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me! Like this is, I mean, yeah, and. So I ended up having to hire lawyers, and, you know, at that time I was like, you know, I mean, I could afford them, but it was still, like, not, you know, it was a bad, it was just a bad situation, and, like, they ended up getting, it ended up costing me $26,000 to get the thing taken down, and it's like, I, I mean, because all the laws basically protect, I mean, it was just like the, the criminal, like, it's just like, I mean, it's just like the guy made just totally made things up about me that were horrendous that would affect my my image and my my business and my public and it's just like you know it's like oh it's, fuck you like you here yeah. you have to you have to pay to get it you know taken down it right. was it was it was really so it's like yeah since then it's like that's why yeah it's, i mean for the most part i'm not a i'm not a big you know twitter guy or anything like that i mean I don't like, you know, clerical work anyway, so yeah. that's not really why I got into comedy, but yeah, I, I shy away from, I shy away a lot from, um, you know, I don't want to hear people start, people's shitty comments and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's like, dude, I, you know, I, you know, it's like, if you don't like me, I understand, but, you know, it's like, what, why do you have to, why would you directly seek me out and tell me it's it's i don't get the reasoning why yeah. people just don't stay on the pages they like 
Right. You know. Yeah, it's like I have never, you know, there's never been something I didn't like, and I'm like, I have got to go tell so and so, you know, how awful they are, whatever. It's like, just, yeah. just let it go. And maybe, uh, maybe we can do this. Let's ask the fans out there if you've hated on a page before. What was your reasoning behind that? Because, I mean, why do people go on? Yeah, and, it, and it really is like, you know. I mean, I, I just, you know, I, I always get, uh, I get mad because, it, you know, especially, like, when people also, like, they they pigeonhole me in a way, like, you know, if, like, somebody doesn't like me, they generally, like, go, you know, you know, they, they'll, 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 they'll put me in a light that it really isn't true, you know, mm-hmm. like, it's like, you know, I made the joke in Meet Cap about, uh, you know, I'm sick of people who read. <laughs> and One of my it favorites. Was, and and this <laughs> and that it was that same Houston reporter that was like you know like uh, you know said that you know don't go see your show if you like literacy and I'm like <laughs> lady I wasn't running for fucking political office it's just a funny you know fe- it's based on a feeling nobody likes to go to school mm-hmm. so it's just like it's just based on that and it was just like you know uh, yeah it's people are dicks and and it's like. They're really, you know, the internet has just made it so, so much more available for them to, to be douchebags. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's, uh, it sucks. Yeah, in that joke too, you talk about, you know, people say that reading is better than movies, and that's just not right. True. Oh yeah, that's the, not true. The, the book is so much better. <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, how could it possibly be better? You There's get no done with a movie effect. in like an hour and a half, two hours, and mm-hmm. the book takes me like four years to get through. Right? You know, <laughs> they cut through the shit, and it's, it's like, yeah, like I'm sorry, I read Jaws, mm-hmm. and the the movie kicks the shit out of the book. <laughs> yeah. All right, we don't have to say in the movie all the time. <laughs> He said. Yeah, right. She said. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to describe the shark. <laughs> I saw him. He's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Leading into that, uh, how about one of the jokes that you get the best response from, like fans after the show, they come up. I love this joke. Is there just one particular one that people really love? Um, you know, through I guess throughout the year, it's um the. <clears throat> The orange popsicle joke does get. I still get people coming up to me and like you know they they're like I got to, you know I love the orange popsicle bit and I like I said on the radio this morning it was like you know I mean I don't do a lot of pretty much any of the jokes that I did on Meat Cap anymore just because I feel like they're old you know mm-hmm. they're on that and whatever else you know they're on a couple other things too right. and it's like uh, but uh, but you know. I remember I used to, you know, I do I do the orange popsicle joke, and it's like inevitably I'm like, you know, why do they still have orange in the box? And it's like there's always just one fucking idiot in the crowd that would get, well, I like orange. And it's like, <laughs> I, do you have a joke for that? Because I have a joke for mine. Like, it's just shut up. And it's like I, I just, uh, the orange popsicles, people love uh, the I guess the thing about the Loch Ness monster, they mm-hmm. love the um, oh the the you know um, I you know people always like the the um, when I worked at the golf course and the the, the swan attacking me and the catching the gophers and then mm-hmm. one that really has always hit home with people I guess is the um, uh, helping my dad work on a car yep. and I held the light get, I'd hold the light and get yelled at. And it's one of those jokes that I really wish I had back. Like, you know, because as you grow as a comic, you get better. And it's like, I could do that joke so much better now. You know, just because I'm, you know, I've just grown and I could, you know, I could write it better. I could deliver it better. I could do everything better with it. And it was just like, I remember that joke, even though people will probably more than any other like always you know come up to me and say how that joke really hit home with them because they had to do the same thing um i remember that joke you know there were so many times when i i mean you know like i would do that joke and i get to the part where it was like you know yeah i you know i never learned anything all i learned how to do was hold the light and get yelled at and i'd sit there and i would hold the microphone out and there would be 
dead silence in the room, like, and I'd be, it'd be so, right. a, you know, like, my dick in the wind situation, <laughs> like, where it's just like, fuck, like, it was just, it was such a joke where it was like, either it's gonna kill, or pe it's just gonna go completely, like, and it was like, you know, it's one of those jokes that, like, yeah, people it, people always tell me about it and they loved it and they, and they like they related to it but there were a lot of nights where that joke just flatlined and it was like fuck yeah. I am sitting here with this fucking mic like and to, just to <laughs> dead silence whereas you know some other nights there were just laughter and applause so yeah. well luckily on meat cap you got it pretty good yeah it ended up <laughs> it went well for my special so <laughs> yeah yeah that's the way I basically i stopped doing it after yeah. that it was like all right yeah all right we got it down so we're good, uh, we're good. more fan interaction here what joke do you like of john's uh any like your favorite or something in me where you actually Heard ya. So, yeah, fan interaction. Speaking of, let's do this next part real quick. We're taking up a lot of your time, but let's do a few of these. How about? This is called our BSC box. Probably something you've not experienced before in another interview, but uh, I don't <laughs> think anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then that, yeah, let's. <laughs> but uh, we've had fans like Backstage Entertainment on Facebook. You guys can do the same. Get your questions in here for entertainers we interview to answer. So we've been trying, like I told you too, uh, these action cards too. Like uh -huh. you would pick a number one through fifty-five, and you have to act out the action while you do the question. So okay. let's do one of those, and then we can see how that goes, and maybe do a couple more normal or. Keep okay. going with that. All right. So let's do this. You pick a number between 1 through 55 first. All right. I'm going to go with my lucky number nine. Number nine. Waving at someone back home. So you're just really excited to be on TV. Have you seen those people in the background of, like, maybe somebody getting you know, uh -huh. interviewed on TV? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, All right. So we'll try that. So go ahead and draw one. Answering this question. Uh, As a crazy okay. person on TV, maybe. <clears throat> Well, they're, 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 what happens if you get sick right before performing? Well, um, uh, yeah, do you, oh, do you, are, we, are we talking, uh, so right I guess we're talking stage, about, you... like, sick, I mean, because, yeah, it's like, I have a, yeah, I have a throat thing going on right now, because of, the fucking, my throat's getting beat up, um, <laughs> Nebraska weather, right? It's been, I mean, yeah, it's just, it really is, it's, uh, it's the road, it's just, yeah, it's, uh, been a long stretch, I need a rest, uh, yeah, it's like, my, I think my wife will be glad for me to shut the fuck up when I get home, <laughs> but, what happens if I get sick before performing, mm -hmm. um, and remember, mom's behind the camera, <laughs> hi mom, you know, before I get, if I, if, what happens, if I get sick before performing, I mean, you wouldn't believe how many times, hey, everybody back <laughs> in East Liverpool, Ohio, you wouldn't believe how many times I've got, I get uh, sick before performing. It's just, uh, I basically, um, I, you know, I, 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 I'm pretty quick. I can poop fast. So, <laughs> so it's, uh, you know what, it, it's, it's, it, I've never, I don't throw up. So, you know, it, but I do, I do have uh, an IBS situation. So a lot of times, yes, um, everybody back home, <laughs> I, uh, um, I, I, I can, I've, I've done it, I've done it pretty fast, yep. but I still, I still make sure that uh, I get my hands washed everybody back home <laughs> but uh um i think maybe there was one time i didn't and i literally like i made sure like the the guy bringing me on stage i was like just did you do pound i got <laughs> i got i got wipey hands yeah so yeah you're, yeah you don't want to get involved with this but yeah uh i i it it happens <laughs> It happens quite a bit. <laughs> well, I think mom uh, is pretty happy you're waved at her. You want to try another one of those? Maybe you can get a little bit better one of those, huh? Okay. You want to pick a number here? Can I, uh, get, can I do it without the number? You can. Let's just do it normal. Uh, well, so let's see. I don't see. have any band members. Okay, you've been on stage with many comedians before. Which comedian 
um, have you seen get most out of control? And so the question is, which band member? Because a lot of our interviews are tailored toward bands, but... Well, you know what I will say is I, I've never really... All I've ever really heard are uh, stories and hearsay mm -hmm. about um, people getting, you know, people with drinking drug problems, whatever, and things that have happened to them on stage that's right. due to that. But... Um, what I will say is, like, by, in relation to this this question, I remember um, when we were on the Vince Vaughn Wild West uh, tour, <clears throat> Brad Ernst used to um, take a beer on stage with him every time we, you know, he went out. Like, right. I take water, like, you know, he would always take a beer. And our tour was sponsored by Bud Light. And so we had all Bud you know, like you just you know, in the bus, everywhere, backstage, all that stuff. We go to Milwaukee, and Brett walks on stage with a Bud Light, and like, like maybe a minute into his set, he's like, he takes a swig of his his Bud Light, and somebody's like, "Why don't you get a Miller Light?" And Brett's like, "It's like." Cause I don't want a fucking Miller like you know what, what, what do you give a fuck what I drink and I was like and we're like Brett they make Miller beer in Milwaukee shut up like it was like <laughs> it was just so funny that it was just like I mean it's like he, he just didn't realize like where he was and why somebody would give a shit what kind of beer he was drinking on stage but uh yeah that's what it reminds me of is uh he was a member of the band and he did you know i mean he was a guy that was like you know he's from uh he's from jersey originally and uh we always knew the point where he he had too much to drink mm -hmm. and it was like somebody's gonna get hit tonight so let let's get back to the bus because yep. because yeah, because because brett brett will throw down exactly <laughs> well we've taken up a lot of your time how about this uh just a last message for all your fans out there or maybe your haters <laughs> <laughs> how about we do the fans you know i i i, I want to say to um to all my fans all my fans number one uh i am uh i'm i'm finally i'm taping my new um uh our special uh april 6th in las vegas south point casino mm -hmm. and um hopefully that'll be out very soon this year but um and then just uh to all my fans that, that just you know that continually come out to my shows like you know i've heard of people driving long distances and people come to my show you know last year and this year and what it's come to it multiple times like uh you know i i just can't tell you how unbelievably humbling that is and you know and I, it, it to to know that like you know because i i mean you know as a comedian we're like anybody you know you, you get worn out from your what you do and you get grouchy and you, you just don't think it's like it and to know that that it's it you know it it, it it has a positive effect right. on people and people like it there there's there really is nothing better than that so i really i thank you guys all for for you know the kind words and just and the ones who say, say shitty things I thank you to my wife for reading those and not telling me yep. <laughs> you'll be getting a fuck you card in the mail pretty soon <laughs> once again guys john caparulo definitely check him out watch meat cap if you haven't yet great stuff and look for his upcoming stuff coming out hey everyone make sure to like backstage entertainment on facebook to see our photos to enter yourself into contests for autographed prizes and other news also make sure to click the subscribe button on youtube to check out the rest of our videos and you can find us on twitter to get updates about what we're doing for backstage entertainment this is jeremy lafrance one thing i don't do with that, that bit i've never done is like i can't fake a british accent Oh. Like, I don't want to insult everybody's intelligence yeah. by doing a bad impression right. of a British guy. So it's like, you know, <laughs> I, I just don't even bother. I yeah. do like, uh, yeah, on your meat cap, you had the impersonation of the French guy. Oh, he yeah. that side was super bleu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that happened um, when I was in um, Montreal 
uh, for the first time uh, uh, for the festival. Right. I was in a Burger King and um, <laughs> a few times, but uh, yeah, the uh, <laughs> the I was just I was buying these guys in line, and like I said, it was like they literally. I mean, you know, they're the you know you they're thugs. Like you could tell, yeah. like you know, they look like the type of guys you know you would be afraid of if you <laughs> ran to it anywhere else. And he started speaking French. It's like. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you could pull out the biggest gun in the world right now, and it'd still be like, ah, you're, you're French. It's just, it's, <laughs> I, I'm not worried no. right now, yeah, so.